and welcome back to the Food this YouTube channel. I'm Haxian, I visit Knit and Crochet, who's food families have gravity love to the world of design. This is my YouTube channel where I share all of my recent knit and crochet projects, as well as designs, tutorials, yarn hauls, and more. Lots of things happening over here. I upload twice a week, every Tuesdays and Fridays, so if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. It means so much to me that you take time out of your crafty day to craft with me. So in today's podcast episode, there are a lot of finished objects, surprisingly. Um, I won't lie, it's a lot of socks. <laughs> so there's a lot of sock content because I love making socks. Socks and cowls and a lot of accessories. So we'll just get right into it. At the time of filming this, we are March 22nd, I'm gonna say. I have no idea if that's right. I think it's right. I'm pretty sure it's right. Before I start, I do want to say um, I live at home with my family in the state of Pennsylvania. We are a lot of people in a very small house. Um, it's a beautiful day outside, the window's open, so there are background noises. I do my best to edit all this out, but you know, I just do my best, so I do apologize for any sudden loud noises or anything. Okay, let's jump right into finished objects. The first finished object I'm going to share actually is not a sock or a cowl. It's rather large. It is this blanket. So I started this corner to corner blanket quite a while ago. I ran out of yarn. I recently got more yarn for it and it is done. So here it is. It's a pretty good size. Um, I'd say one step above a lap blanket. Um, it's kind of like a, a good crib size baby blanket, kind of, I don't know, like a good throw. We'll, we'll go with that. I'm not really sure about the measurements. I haven't me uh, measured it, so I couldn't tell you, but it's it's a good accent blanket. So this was crocheted out of I love this yarn. I love this chunky, um, and I think just the mustard color. The hook is, if you've been following along, it's a mystery hook. It says it's a six millimeter hook, I believe. It says it's okay. It's not really. <laughs> There's something funky about it, but it's the biggest hook I have, and it did get a nice gauge. So this is the blanket. It used ten skeins of yarn total, so five to um, get to the widest point and then five to decrease back down. Um, I just magic knotted the balls together when it came to the end of one. If I can show you a spot right here. And because I'm lazy, I did not bother to trim my ends. So they're just poking out. I have to trim them at some point, but I'm super happy with it. It's so nice and I'm just obsessed with corner to corner blanket method. So. That's the blanket. I can't tell. On the camera, it looks as if you can clearly see the change in dye lot. Like, if, like one skein was a very different dye lot. But in person, I don't see that at all. So it's very strange. I can't see it on that side, but maybe it's just the light. I don't know. I noticed when I was taking pictures of it yesterday, too. Um, if you follow me on Instagram and the Freeform Knitter on Instagram, you would have seen some pictures I shared of this. It, it's very strange. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's a blanket. It's soft and I love it. So I just quickly closed the window because there was a bird chirping very loudly because it knows I'm recording. Oh well. So the next finished object, um, we'll come into socks. I have two full pairs of finished socks and I'm so excited about both of them. So. Um, the first one, I'm not going to go into too much detail about because they are my scrappy socks. They're finished. I am obsessed with them. I actually just released a video on my channel uh, all about the scrappy projects I did in March. And this is a collection of videos I hope to do throughout the year. So I'll be talking m more in depth about these in um, the next scrappy update video. Um, but I've talked about them quite a bit here on the podcast. Um, all scrappy socks. I used my shortcut heel sock recipe um, with my stockinette shortcut heel, my hat trick toe. They are so much fun and I'm obsessed with scrappy socks and just I love them so much. Look how pretty they are. I am just, I love them. All of these scraps are various nitpicks, um, uh, bases of yarn. Well, the same base, just different, like, dye, different colorway lines, um, and I love them so much. They are so fun and bright and colorful, and I'm just inspired to do all the things with scrappy yarn. So, that is that finished object. So happy to have this full pair. They're just so much fun. I really am obsessed with 
just having a nice vanilla sock on the needles and it's just so great. I love it so much. And the second sock I finished is the second sock in my upcoming cable sock collection. So I have a full pair here. I have one on the blocker. So it's easy to show you, but actually I can show you the front. This is the second sock in an upcoming collection and that is coming this May. Um, this will be the second sock in that collection. And it is in testing now. My testers are doing an amazing job. It's, I've said it before, the best part of like, I think the most exciting part of pattern, um, getting a pattern out is seeing the testers, like the yarns they use, their feedback. It's just so much fun and I can't wait to share, like, their socks with you. So be sure to follow me on Instagram if you're not already so that when the time comes you can see them because it's going to be so great. Here is the cable pattern. I love this cable repeat so much. It's so easy to memorize. So, it, it having a really simple repeat on like the front of your sock just makes the sock fly and that's what I'm seeing with my testers like their socks are just flying off the needles it's got this fun fake twisted rib cuff lazy twisted rib or I call it it's got my shot cut heel and stockinette hat trick toe it's a cuff down sock and this collection is being designed out of Nipix stroll tweed this is the lavender fields colorway I'm just, I'm obsessed with this colorway. I love it so much. I kind of go back and forth on whether or not I like tweed. Um, in the past when I've knit with tweed, um, especially socks, I've found it um, to be a little bit thicker of a yarn and that didn't make it very pleasurable to me to knit with, but not with this one. No, it's absolutely great. It's, it doesn't add any thickness at all. It just adds this lovely accented sock. I don't know. I just... I'm obsessed with it and I'm going to keep saying that throughout the episode because that's what I feel. I'm obsessed with this colorway, with this base, and these cables are just so beautiful. So this sock is off the needles. It's, it feels so great to have it off the needles. I'm just really excited for this collection. I can't wait for just this collection to be out and to share it with you because I'm literally obsessed with it. The whole ba the premise of this collection is that um, if you want to learn new cable repeats, um, new cable designs, and I'm having so much fun. I love that I've learned this cable repeat and I just kind of want to put it in everything. <laughs> so that's that another finished object. That's three finished objects already and I have two more. They are crochet ones, um, the same you know, obsession with stitch patterns, because that's what you get over here. I am obsessed with different stitch patterns and simple accessories to try those stitch patterns out on. It's just so much fun what you can do with different, just different ways of making the stitches. I mean, it's the same stitches, knits and pearls, but just the way you do it. It's, it's fascinating to me. So pretty pile of socks and there will be more socks in works in progress. Believe you me, I think it's the most amount of socks I've ever had on the needles ever. But before we get to those, let's talk about those last two finished objects. So, both of these are part of my little 5x5 five five stitch challenge I'm doing this year. Um, for the first five months of the year, I'm doing a stitch challenge in crochet where I learn a new stitch pattern and I share it with you in the form of the basic written instructions to put that stitch pattern in anything and a simple pattern to work that stitch pattern up. So they're already two challenges up because we are no yes two challenges up the third one is coming out um next week on tuesday gosh i don't know what date that would be it'll be on the screen hopefully um but it's coming out next week so be sure you subscribe so you don't miss that but we have two other challenges up the toasty warm leg warmers and the quickly now hat um both of those stitch patterns are really simple and so much fun to do one is waffle stitch the other is quick shells and I love the stitch patterns so much and I've done the next two stitch patterns in this little challenge. This one is the one coming out on Tuesday, next Tuesday. Um, this well, I'm filming this on a Tuesday, so it'll be next Tuesday, but it'll be the Tuesday coming to you because you're going to see this on Friday. Scheduling, it's, I'm not good at it. But here is the stitch pattern. I'm obsessed with it. It's called the Textured Lattice Stitch Pattern, and it is so simple. Do not let it fool you. There, It's an 8-row repeat, 
but there are only two rows where you're actually doing anything resembling a, a repeat. It's so simple and I'm obsessed with it. And my cowl is only a single loop cowl because that's the yarn I had. This yarn, I don't even know what this yarn it was. Um, I know where I got it. I got it at a yarn shop ages ago, but the ball band is long lost. So, but I would have made this even longer had I more had I had more of this yarn, because I am obsessed with this stitch pattern. It is so simple, so beautiful. Oh, I am obsessed with it. So you'll be seeing more of this coming soon. Oh. Um, all these, um, the, for the stitch challenge, the written instructions and the patterns can be found free on my blog as well as the complete video tutorials here on YouTube on my channel so you can go look at those if you're interested. I'm actually going to be later today working on the tutorial for this one to get it out to you on Tuesday so yep, I love it so much. It, it feels so nice too. Like it's just such great texture and it's so simple. Yeah, I'm obsessed. So this was something I worked on and that worked up really quick because I was obsessed with the stitch pattern and wanted to learn a new one. I got started on, this will be April's stitch pattern. So a little sneak peek. As you can see, it's two colors because I'm having a lot of fun using up um, my, not only really scraps, but just yarns that I've used in other projects, but basically leftovers. I feel like leftovers and scraps are two different things. Scraps are the little bits you have left. Leftovers are, are the with like you made a project and now this is what you have left over. Is anyone else like that or am I just complicating things? But this stitch pattern, I'll show you on the solid color. I have not opened in my ends, so forgive me. I'm so, I, I love it so much. It's kind of, it kind of reminds me of the quick shells a little bit, this stitch pattern. Um, cause you do have like this shell shape, but it is a bit different. Um, and it's again, super simple. Like I think, especially in crochet, I've said this before, I consider myself a better knitter than crochet just because, um, even though I've been doing them both the same amount of time, I've never really explored in the world of crochet as much as I have in knitting. And that's kind of the reason for this challenge. And when I look at crochet stitches, I kind of get overwhelmed a little bit because with crochet, I find that the written instructions, um, tend to be, they are on the more wordy side just because of the terminology and the charts. I can, I've gotten better at reading crochet charts. I'm still not the best at it. Um, I do find first looking at the chart, like, what am I looking at? Um, but I've gotten better at it. And this stitch challenge, like when I first looked at the picture of this stitch, um, it looked very overwhelming, but it is super simple. You can kind of see it better on the solid color side than the tweed on camera. Super simple. I actually went up a hook size for this cowl. Um, it's a worsted weight yarn. I typically would use a five, but I use a 5.5 millimeter because I really wanted to drape. Um, but I would, I think I might make another one with the smaller hook size just to see because um, the stitch pattern really doesn't need that extra drape just the kind of the look I was going for, but oh, it's so pretty. So pretty. And again, I'm obsessed. That seems to be the only words in my vocabulary today, but that's okay. So we have four, five finished objects. That's five finished objects. That's pretty good. That's what you get for, I skipped a week of podcasting. I just did um, a little kind of day in the life vlog last week. And that kind of, gave me more time to build up a, a thing of actual things to actually show. That's kind of cool. Time. <laughs> okay, moving on into works in progress. So I think the only works in progress I have are socks. Yep. My sweater has not seen any sort of attention because it just hasn't. I do want to, there are two corporate trade projects I want to cast on. Um, I don't know when this is going to happen. One of them has to happen sooner rather than later because I do have a deadline for it. Um, but we're going to just focus on the socks. Focus on the socks. So the first socks are here. Oh, I have more finished objects. They're in here. <laughs> I completely forgot. Okay, so I have five, six, seven works finished objects because I finished more socks. <laughs> These pairs of socks. Okay, this is my new upcoming pattern.
call the shoyosh socks. They are shorty socks with brioche. Worked toe up, and not only did they work toe up, I did it, guys. I perfected my toe up shortcut heel sock construction. I perfected it. This was my first draft, so I actually did a pair of vanilla socks to practice on it to try out a few things. So this pair of vanilla shorty socks and my shortcut heel is perfect. I love it. It's completely changed the game of working toe up socks for me. I'm so excited to work toe up socks now because it's just so much fun and I still get my heel, my perfect shortcut heel. My shortcut heel is a heel construction that requires no short rows and I can now do it to toe up and cup down and I'm obsessed. Um, so I did this pair of shorty socks and this is out of it's DK, I, Yarn Be Sweet Delights, I don't know the colorway name, Pinkaboo maybe, that might be it. So I did this pair of vanilla socks. This is my, you've seen this before, I don't know if I had the finished pair last week, last time I podcasted, um, but this is the first draft of the Shriosh socks uh, with the stockinette heel. And they are so squishy and so perfect and this pattern will be coming out um i hope for a like mid-may a mid-april release so super soon i just have to finish a couple things with the pattern get it out for testers i actually want to form um film a uh kind of like a a tutorial to go with the pattern just talking about a few things about this sock so that's on the agenda it's so it's so pretty so in preparation for the tutorial i have now want to whips. I have two more socks on the go that are on hold until I can do the tutorial. One is just past the toe so I can um, demonstrate how to do brioche, how to start the brioche patterning. And this is how I do my toe up socks. I just cast on. I have a tutorial here on my channel how I do my toe up socks. Um, I don't do any sort of toe up cast on because I always mess them up. So I just cast on and then we'll sew this closed and it looks pretty good in my opinion Like here you can see on the sock Kind of depending on how careful you are with the seam you can get like no um, No visible seam um, Especially on the inside like that's what you don't want like a Hard seam on the inner of your, inside of your foot I think I did a better job on this one the shriosh. Kind of see, just a simple stitch to sew it closed. I have that demonstrated here on YouTube. So this is what my toe looks like. And this is on hold until I can do the tutorial. It's all set to go. Have it, the yarn to go with it. Same yarn, be sweet delight DK. Don't remember the colorway name. And here I have almost a completed Shrioche sock with my Agar Stitch toe up heel. Looks so good. I'm obsessed. I love it so much. Um, I think the hardest part for me, I knew, I knew this would be the hardest part in doing the sock was getting the gusset to look right. The gusset decreases for the heel flap. Or the heel flap joining, I don't know. Um, but it's turning out good and I'm so excited about it. I do need to change a little bit of something on the next sock because there's just a different way of doing it that will make it perfect. But it looks so good. I'm so happy with it. It's just so squishy. And this is also ready for a portion in the tutorial just for joining the brioche in the round. And so these socks have been on hold until I can do that. I have to do that soon. So those are my two DK socks on the needles. Lots going on here. And this, this bag all ready to go. I knit my um, DK socks on a US 4, which I believe is a 3.75. This I am mistaken. Which is a 3.5, okay. 3.75 is so the 5, I believe, but simple bag. So more socks. And now we're on to the other two socks of this sock. That's a lot of socks. It, it's okay though, because these are for tutorials. Like I had to cast them on. 
I don't like, I usually only have at most two socks on the go. So having four, two decay and two fingering, it's quite a bit, but it's okay. It's all good. So which one first? Let's start with this one. This one is the third and final sock in the cabled, st cabled sock collection that I'm designing. Um, it's the sister pattern to these purple socks here, and they're all tangled up in the cowl yarn. Eek. So this will actually be, be, I think, the way I'll order them. This will be the first sock in the collection because it is the easiest cable. Um, so it'll be a good like, introduction to the rest of the cable patterns in that collection. I'm so excited. <laughs> Um, I started this two days ago. I didn't work on- I've worked on it very little considering, but it is going really fast and I hope to get to the heel today. So here's the cable pattern. It looks so good. I love it so much. It's in this really nice mustardy color. Um, here's the ball band. It's the Barley Heather colorway. So, Stroll Tweed, Fingering Weight. Barley Heather. It's a really simple repeat. It's even shorter repeat than the um, other cable. So I think this will be the first in the collection just as a good get your feet wet before you jump into the other cables. All the cables are really simple. They really are. Um, you just have to you have to learn them and that's the whole point of the collection. So there we go. That's my stitch marker just to help me keep track of the repeats. Hope to get to the heel of this today, if not turn the heel. And then my last work in progress, I'm actually at the heel. I have to turn the heel. And it is another scrappy sock, but these are all mini skeins. Like this was a mini set and I'm really excited to be working them up. Here is the sock. I did this in one evening, you guys, not even a full day, an evening. That's how fast vanilla socks fly, especially when you're color blocking them like this. So I had a very, I like even drew a I can actually show you. This is my my bullet journal. I'm trying. I, I, it's not really a very good bullet journal. I'm not a very good at um, doing the whole bullet journal thing. But I did like this color swatch of the minis to kind of decide how I wanted the colors to go. Um, so I kind of grabbed all these club pencils and some other colors and just swatched it out to decide because I really had a hard time deciding. Such a hard time deciding. Um, I ended up doing this one and then I had to decide if I wanted to do all the colors on the leg and then repeat the colors for the foot. The problem with that, or no, not the problem with that, but made me want to do that was because I had only six colors. Um, whereas I had seven for my first pair of scrappy socks, six colors, and then a contrasting heel toe and cuff. I only had six colors for this, which meant I had five colors since I had to do a contrasting heel toe and cuff. So in the end, I decided to just do these large swaths of color because um, I thought that would make it more pleasurable to knit. Like I could knit with a, one color for a long while before cutting it so I didn't have to constantly count my rows. So I did the pink, the blue, I did half the yellow stripe, I'll do the heel and the other half of the yellow stripe, and then we'll be, let's see, I think be these two, like this. So then the then the white for the toe and the heel. I have to do white heel, white toe, these two. So I haven't picked it up. Um, I didn't work at it all yesterday. Did this in one evening, super fun and I just have to do the heel. So it's two heels I have to turn, which always seems to happen when I have two socks on the go. I always get to the heels on both of them and I have to turn both heels, which is not a big problem, but just something I have to do. And then my marker to help me keep track of rows. I knit all my socks on these Chagu Red Lace Needles, a 40 inch cord, um, a 2.75 millimeter, which is a US two or a US two and a half. I never remember, but that's what I knit my socks on. Super pretty. These. I did keep, here they are. This is the tag for the um, mini skein set. Um, Yarn B Pigment and Fiber Goodness Grapefruit. And then the blend of these minis are 60% acrylic, 20% wool, and 20% nylon. And I've used these minis a lot for heels, toes, and cuffs before, so I'm pretty confident that this will be a good sock to hold up. But, yep, super excited about this sock, nice vanilla project, super pretty, and very springtime-ish, I believe. I love 
like the pinks, the blues, and this yellow is a nice contrast. So, yep. That is everything I have to talk about today in this podcast episode. Thank you so much for stopping by and crafting with me today. If you could, comment down below something you are working on. I would love to hear all about it. I get so much inspiration hearing other people talk about their works in progress. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe down below as well as check out the links, follow me on Instagram, and I will see you in the next video. Happy crafting!